Hey, what's up, everyone? How you guys doing? It's Monday over on Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. This is the YouTube portion of the show. Don't forget, guys, those that are watching us, immediately after this show at 8.30, we will be on over at MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com for the rest of this show. And everybody knows why I like that, man. I am uncensored there, and we can really get down. So, yes, don't forget to go over there and join us there. Or you can go to the Discord channel where, yes, where everybody hangs out, baby. Everybody hangs out and listens and screws around. China Dow's on uh, the show over there, so you guys can uh, sit over there. Uh, first up today, man, sad state of affairs on the profiling issue. This from the Duquesne Abate. I find it absolutely disgusting. And this is from Chris Hansen. We actually had him on the show. Disgusting that the Illinois State Gaming Board is threatening bars in Rockford with pulling their gaming license if they allow, quote, certain motorcycle clubs into their establishment. He goes on to say, this is motorcyclist profiling, slapping us all in the face. You got that right, man. You got that right. Uh, they're pretty bad out in Rockford. It's been that way for a long time now. Uh, it's The locals don't like clubs, man. They do not like them. And what probably happened is, some freaking Leo got a freaking bug up his ass because he got butt hurt because one of these club members were probably sleeping with his old lady. And they called the Illinois Gaming Bar. Now, in Illinois, you can have the slot machines in. I don't know how it is all over the country, but here in Illinois, you can. One arm bandits. One arm bandits. And boy, they are a bandit, let me tell you. But anyway. You can have up to five machines in your establishment, and you are licensed through the gaming board. Now, that's where it sucks. These bars probably make more money on the machines than they do on liquor sales anymore. So when a club comes in, and you have the gaming board threatening to pull your license, of course... The bar is going to then put up the no color sign, probably. It always happens that way. Always happens. And so now, because somebody's wearing a patch, they cannot be served because the bar owner is going to be afraid of losing that gaming license. Which, again, brings, uh, you know... It has to be tens of thousands of dollars in on that thing every month, man. It's ridiculous how much they're making on that. So now they're targeting the bars' income with the threats. And I'm really happy that Duquesne Abay came out with this information. I know uh, hopefully that NCOC will get involved in this. There's also a law happening that's trying to be passed anyway at the state level about motorcycle profiling. It's not like they have any other states where it outright bans the practice, but uh, it's something. It's better than nothing. Hopefully, as it goes through the revisions, people can get on the phone with their representatives and hopefully get it uh, toughened up, if you will. But the Illinois State Police and all these police departments are going to be out there crying and whining. So who knows? One thing I do know is this situation in Rockford stinks. It's about a half hour away from me. And this is something similar that they tried to do in Sturges and around there is go after hotels uh, licenses if they let club members stay there. I guess... You know, the Constitution uh, and the Bill of Rights really doesn't mean nothing to law enforcement. It only means something when it's uh, good for them and not regular citizens. Because a few cops uh, have a beef. What am I talking about? Few, they all have a beef against clubs. 
so they get their way because they're wearing that badge and gun. Sad state of affairs, if you ask me. So we're going to keep you guys updated on that news as it comes in, and we'll be covering it, seeing if uh, anybody's going to push back on it. You know, it's cool that Dupay, uh, K and A bait has. So we're going to see where it goes from there. Uh, later in the news portion of the show, we're going to, and by the way, this is only the first part of the news session. I cover a lot of it in the second session as well, uh, where I don't have to be all shut up and stuff by censorship. Uh, and it's real fun, man. China Dow sits in and all that good stuff. For so again, MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. If you like to donate, you can do so through our P PayPal. <laughs> My fault, man. I'm getting off one of them hangovers, man, from the 420 last night. Anyway, you can do uh, PayPal. The link's in the description box, Super Chat, and the Cash App. More importantly, if you cannot donate, please watch the ads all the way through on YouTube and share us on your social media. That way it starts getting the videos a lot more noticed instead of uh, worrying about YouTube selling, you know, showing people the stuff. That right there really helps more than you guys know it. Don't forget to like, like it, baby, the video. Or if you don't like it, hit the dislike button twice. It works. So today, the media boy... The media in Australia kicking up some dirt. I got some uh, prick over on uh, our Harley Liberty dot uh, com site. Why are you putting news from Australia here? You know what, people? Try to expand your minds a little bit. I know it's hard, but just try. Not everything happens here in the United States. I know us Americans like to think we're the center of the universe, but it just isn't the case. You know, the lifestyle extends from every corner of the world. And we have listeners that are all over the world, so we're going to cover the news for them as well. If you don't like it, you can go into your corner and pull your packer until you feel better. How's that sound for you? Just putting it nice. Uh, we're also going to cover that shooting that happened at a motorcycle shop. Uh, I've been getting asked a lot of people what clubs were involved. Nobody knows right now. They haven't released it. Uh, yeah, some people have been uh, emailing me, telling me the groups and stuff. But until the mainstream press comes out and says who it was, we will not... Uh, report on that goody stuff nope 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 won't do it won't do it so anyway we're gonna get into the biker news right now yes we are oh man did i screw that one up uh i gotta get better at that uh anyway james benson testifies on own behalf jury now deliberating in Marion County murder trial. Yes. We talked about this one last week uh, with this pagan. Uh, he was actually called the head honcho. But, you know, you know how the media plays stuff. But anyway, he uh, actually, he's testifying on his own behalf and it's gone to jury trial. Let's listen. Let's and go. To come on the air, continuing coverage out of Marion County as the jury is currently deliberating the case of James Vincent. Well, that was. As we come on oh, the air, continuing go. coverage out of Marion County as the jury wow. is currently deliberating the case of James Vincent. Well, why don't we just do it ourselves, man? Because it seems like 12 WBOY is having technical difficulties. Uh, Vincent is accused of first degree murder in the 2018 incident. While Vincent has not denied firing the shots that took Grab's life. He testified that he never intended to kill his friend. He took the stand and explained what led to the shots being fired that night, stating that when he found out Grab had said on tape his intention to rob Vincent, he could not let it go. 
He explained that the confrontation took about two minutes to escalate, but he and Graham were never within arm's reach of each other. Following the shooting, Vincent told the jury he was freaked out and ran into the garage area, saying he knew Grab needed help. He also expected Vernon Jr. Carpenter to get Grab help when he left with him. This happened less than 10 minutes after the shooting. He was also surprised and upset to learn that Grab had died, and he said he cannot really explain the feeling. I think this, you know what, I think it's true what he, this guy is trying to say, man, is, hey, you know, there was an altercation, he shot him, the other guys were supposed to get him to a hospital, it didn't happen that way. Uh, Vincent testified that he did not answer the door when law enforcement arrived at his home because he was scared, and he was already on probation. Vincent was asked about a padlock on Grab's bike, and he stated he knew nothing about it. However, he did say bikers do use them, and he had seen Grab use one before on his bike. This is very true. Some of us in the old days used to just carry down our belt loops. He was uncertain if he had done so on the night of the shooting. The prosecution cross-examined Vincent, beginning with the garage. Vincent affirmed that he left his clothes inside the garage. But he did not see anyone hosing down the garage to clean up the blood. Vincent testified that he had been up all night on the morning of September 24th, 2018. And he texted Grab at 5 a.m. saying he was out of town and would talk to him later. He admitted that it, this was a lie and said he lied to his friends all the time because sometimes he did not want to be bothered. Vincent then outlined his time with the Pagans Motorcycle Club, saying he first became a member in 2016 and became president in 2018. And that's one of the deals like they did with Freddie. They'll bring the club in, even though they had nothing to do with anything, and they use the club against the defendants like they are here. Vincent provided details on the scene of the shooting, saying Grab went down after being shot and there was a lot of blood. He explained that he helped Grab uh, get up, but he did not call 911 because he was scared. He also admitted that he shot Grab four times. Ouch. When asked why it would be someone else's responsibility to call 911, Vincent paused before stating that he was scared after having just shot a friend. He, was also, uh, he also stated that he took off his clothes because he was scared and not because it was evidence. Uh, as far as helping Grab out, Vincent said he gave everyone instructions to give him help. He testified that when he pulled his gun, he shot at the ground, but uh, the question was raised about the impossibility of pointing at the ground and hitting a man 10 feet away. Yes, why would I shoot a man in the legs if I wanted to kill him? He also said he had no reason to kill him. He was asked if uh, he left a man lying in his garage withering in pain when he knew he had a gun in his pocket, to which rep uh, Vincent replied yes. He said he did not try to take Grab's gun from him. Finally, the defense asked Vincent if he ever meant to kill his friend. He replied no. The jury has begun deliberating on this case as of Friday, and when there is a verdict reach, we will let you know. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Remember Rico? Well, they're talking about using it against some people in the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers. And then, they specifically mention in this article, you know, the one used against the Hell's Angels, they just can't help themselves, the media. Instead of saying Hell's Angels, why didn't they say the Mafia? You know, but, you know, the Hell's Angels, it pops up in the search results. Capital right and investigator shipped and focused to militia group with ties to Trump Associates, ex-FBI official. Now, this has a lot to do with the uh, Proud Boys again, Oath Keepers. Then, of course, some of this stuff comes out of MSNBC, which you can't take a freaking look at without uh, doubting anybody they say. 
um, let's see here. They're going to be focused on a conspiracy case that involves members of the Yotha uh, Keepers Militia. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about the Proud Boys, and now in the double digits, the number of Proud Boys. But now the focus seems to be turning towards the Oath Keepers. It's funny. They talk about the Proud Boys, but God forbid they ever mention Antifa. You chickens. I, oh, I'll have more after on the second half. And uh, hat's significant because the Oath Keepers, at least some of them, seem to have a relationship or affiliation with some in the Trump circle, even Roger Stone. The neat thing about the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers being looked at investigatively is we may see the application of a RICO statue. That's a racketeering statue that has been used against groups like the Hell's Age. Oh, they did put it in here, the Mafia. So prosecutors may be saying there's enough here that this group stands for enough violence that we're going to use a racketeering statue. Take their assets, take down the group. That's an opportunity, he explained. But you bastards won't go after the money trail with Antifa, right? We'll go into this on the second half. Now, this is where we got the title of this segment. Right here out of Perth. Now, man, this is like a soap opera to them over in Australia. Why Perth's escalating bikey war could lead to a Troy Mercanti versus Day, what is it, Dwayne uh, Braxjoff face-off. The Mongols' involvement in the active tit-for-tat attacks between the Hells Angels and Rebels may prompt a Perth Underworld matchup for the ages. Troy Mercanti versus Dane Abrakovich. That's according to the West uh, Australian's chief reporter, who says a showdown between the two bikey figureheads is possible. Well, hmm... Yeah, they're hyping that one up. I don't know. Why don't they just, like, pay for charity or something? Two guys jump in the ring and beat the hell out of each other. Be easier than all this shit. Anyway, Martin's friends with coffin cheater turned fink turned mongol Troy Mercanty. One, two, three. Okay. Had, had been bashed by Brockovich in a separate incident in the weeks leading up to his death. No one has been charged over Martin's execution. There's him right there. Uh, there was the guy who got shot. If D Dane uh, Brakovich ever comes face to face with the Mongols figurehead, he would surely have it in the back of his mind that history suggests the only person that can kill Troy Mercanty is Troy. Well, if they ever come face to face, the Mongols and Angels really don't get along uh, anywhere. Uh, Martin's death is only one element of increased tension and police activity across the city. On Thursday, police raided a Rebels clubhouse in response to a shooting earlier that morning at Port Kennedy, home of former Rebel Stephen Burney. Bur Benny uh, defected to Rivals Mongols bike gang last year. And here is the dude, Dane. Uh, dude, I guess you'd like some tattoos, man. I, I guess you really do. What the hell? I got a couple face tattoos, but damn, bud, you went overboard. Guess he's the Hell's Angel. The Miles Clubhouse in Rockingham and the Hell's Angel Clubhouse in Inglewood were also targeted in the raids. Hmm. This incident uh, comes after the Escott home of Hell's Angel bikey Dane uh, Brockovich was targeted in a drive-by shooting. They're getting all gangster over there. Now I can see why they're, you know, calling everybody Nike bikies over there. A nice damn gold ass chain. You know that shit's real, too. Bulls, you're a Chicago Bulls fan, huh? I don't know, man. That ain't a Bulls colors. But uh, anyway, yes, they're saying these two might come to a head. So, again, why don't you guys just go and do your deal inside of a ring, man? Why keep on bringing people and getting all kinds of coppers around, man? That's all I have to say. Uh, yeah, it's none of my business. I just report it. Uh, here's that deal. A bike shop shooting went from argument to gunfight. Columbia, South Carolina. 
a shooting at a South Carolina motorcycle shop that killed one man and hurt four others escalated from an argument in the parking lot. Two people have been charged, but not with the Thursday afternoon shooting itself. Uh, the sheriff said more charges may come as the investigation continues. Two of the people wounded remain in hospital. The name of the man killed has not been released. Uh, Christopher Wheat was arrested after he was released from the hospital and charged with obstruction of justice. James Hill, 58, is charged with first-degree assault by mob. The men remain in jail awaiting a bond hearing. It wasn't known if they had lawyers to speak on their behalf. We will be covering more as we get that information. Uh, back over to our crazy Aussies. Drug arrest linked to OMCG South Australia. Three men have been arrested for trafficking controlled drugs following an investigation that commenced in October of 2020 by detectives from the Serious and Organized Crime Branch. The three men are associates to members of the Hells Angels. And there you go. That's why it made the news, because they're associates to members of Hell's Angels. I love your reporting. You guys are about as worse as MSNBC and CNN over here in the, the United States. Yes, you are. DA, former, and this is a choreographed wall of shame. Oh, we got one. Uh... OR PD officer arrested for assault after kicking handcuffed juvenile. Uh, Andre Thompson kicked the handcuffed juvenile in the department's interview room while waiting for him to be picked up by a foster parent. What a dick. Ah. According to a release from the district attorney's office, uh, he's a former officer with the Oak Ridge Police Department. He is facing an assault charge after kicking a handcuffed juvenile. Officer said that the juvenile was a male teenage runaway and that he was taken into custody while officers contacted a foster parent. The teenager was defiant towards officers, officials said, as he was held in the Oak Ridge Police Department's interview room. Thompson was watching the teen and was being recorded since they were in the interview room. Officials said that the teen refused to sit down and was verbally threatening towards Thompson. Eventually, Thompson entered the room from the doorway and kicked the teen. It was an attempt to force the teen to sit down. Thompson was placed on administrative leave by the police department before being fired. The TBI looked into the case according to the release. He turned himself in and was booked into the Anderson County Detention uh, Facility on assault charges with $1,000 in bond. His first court date has not been scheduled. Ooh, ouch, man. That must suck for you, buddy. <laughs> really sucks for you. I don't know, man. It don't even even seem the blue law, uh, wall holds any damn more. But what do you guys think of that one story out in Australia, man? Do you see that freaking so, so uh, tongue tied? Smoke another one. Uh, house like soap opera drama over there, man. They freaking uh, eat up all this kind of shit in Australia, man. And now that you look at everybody. It's like, man, what happened to the old school scooter tramp and stuff? It didn't like that no more. Oh, dirty, greasy bikers. Nope, nope, nope. It's the Nike bikey hip hop decade. It's That's what it looks like, man. You got your Nike bikies over there. You got your hip hopsters over here. Boy, has it all changed there, son. Yes, it has changed a lot. You know, I like looking good myself. I do. But I don't go overboard. No, I do not. These guys walking around. The, you know, well, one good thing is you don't see them with their colors on because of all the stupid laws over there. But at the same time, it was like, damn, man, you are looking gangster. And you wonder why them, they're all over you all the time. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. 
Anyway, don't forget to uh, subscribe. I would appreciate it. Pass us around. And in about five minutes, the second segment's going to start over on MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. WMMRDB Rockford, baby. We're going to have some good tunes. China Dow's going to be coming in. We're going to have a good old time. We usually go to about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, man. So it's an awesome freaking show. You can listen in our Discord server. That link's in the YouTube uh, deal. Uh, you go in there. It's free to join. Talk to everybody you want. Uh, video chat. Everything, man. So with that, I will talk to you guys later. I'll see you on the second ha uh, half for those joining us on MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. Radio.com.